Welcome to the Cook with Janie Kitchen today. That's me, Janie Turner, and I'm going to be sharing two of my favorite burger recipes with you today. When it comes to barbecues, and this week has been all about barbecues, the burger is totally accepted in many, many countries in the world. And certainly it is a lot of pleasure eating a burger with your hands and maybe a little drip of something from inside the burger coming out. It is wonderful fun and great, great food to share. So I'm actually really looking forward to sharing these two burger recipes with you. Brilliant recipes, and I think that you'll really enjoy them. We have a spicy bean burgers recipe today, and hopefully you can see these lovely ingredients. We've got 50 grams of fresh ginger. That's a lot, but actually it gives the flavor to these burgers. 100 grams of red onion, and 170 grams of bread, 100 grams of peanuts or cashews, or if you can't have either of those, try using sunflower seeds instead. And two teaspoons of a mild chili powder, I made my own this morning, so if anybody's interested, you can ask me about that later. And 400 grams of red kidney beans. You can either cook them yourself or you can get them from a tin. Very easy to get and do. And that's the one that we're going to do first today. Hi, Denise. Hi, Caroline. And um, the next recipe is brilliant beef burgers. Because of our brilliant barbecues theme, it's great to have a brilliant beef burgers recipe. And when I grew up, my mom always made this recipe, these beef burgers, and um, I just thought that was normal. But in actual fact, a lot of people these days buy ready-made beef burgers from the stores. And these homemade ones are way better. So after we've made our bean burger, our spicy bean burger mix, we'll go on to our beef burgers. Both are really super simple and very delicious. And we've got some to show you at the end of today too. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do my spicy bean burgers and I'll just bring over my ingredients here and move this recipe book stand out of the way. There we are. So what we've got today is we've got some beans, some ginger, my homemade chili powder, and that's the kind of chili powder that's not um, ground chilies. It's actually a mixture of spices that you would use in a chili con carne, for instance, just so you're aware. And also for our Canadian and American friends, beef burgers are called hamburgers there. So that's what you're doing today too. So we've got some um, lovely ingredients here and I have the wrong Thermomix bowl there. Let me just get this other one and I'll put that one to one side. So John, maybe you could hand me the other clean Thermomix bowl from over on the side there. And what we're going to start with today is we're actually going to do the ginger first for our bean burgers. Thank you very much, that's perfect right there. And I've got some sliced ginger. I don't bother peeling the outside of the ginger as you can see. This is organic ginger, no problem, and I love using the skin. It probably has some extra nutrients in it. Hi, Becky. Nice to see your name popping up, and Sarah. So save yourself some effort. Use the ginger with its skin on, and if you have a look at a knobbly ginger root, you'll see little lines on the skin, and that shows you where the ginger is growing. So it grows opposite to the lines. And when you cut across those lines, sort of lined up, you, your slices lined up with those lines on the skin, then you cut the little threads in the ginger and it means that you actually are able to enjoy the ginger without getting any stringy bits in your teeth. So here goes our 50 grams of ginger. I've pre-weighed things this morning because we're doing two recipes and I'm just going to do five seconds here and at speed nine, just to mince the ginger. It's amazing that this can be done this quickly. So you could probably hear that. It was working 
on the ginger for maybe the first two seconds. Five seconds will definitely cover the chopping in all your Thermomix models. So here we are. Now what you've got is you've got a wonderful minced ginger. It is totally amazing that you can get it done that quickly. So five seconds. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add the bread and the onions and the peanuts all together. And the Thermomix is very clever at chopping things evenly, even when you put different textures inside. So I really like that. Oh my gosh, I can smell the ginger, it's wonderful. So now I'm just going to do five seconds at speed seven. So that's just going to chop all of this up together. And again, you can hear that that is done very, very quickly. It's so nice. And thank you for all the happy hearts and lovely faces about cheerfulness, about how quickly you can get this done. Hi, Georgina. So here we are with the chopped mixture again. And John's just getting the light. Wonderful. So you can see that that's all beautifully chopped up. And I'm just going to scrape down the sides here because the next thing that I'm going to add is the beans and the chili powder. So homemade chili powder always has some cumin in it and that's what this has and some paprika. And I'm going to put in two level teaspoons because my, my homemade ground cayenne chilies that I've added into here are pretty hot. And I do want people to be able to eat this and taste it and enjoy it. So that's my chili powder, and here we go with the red kidney beans. You could do all sorts of other beans. So anything that you've got, you could do chickpeas and have a lighter colored burger. You could do um, navy beans or cannellini beans, or even lentils, as long as they're cooked and rinsed and drained, then you're fine. If you're making your own kidney beans, you're cooking them from scratch, from dried beans, use about 120 grams of dried beans for this recipe and, um, and then drain, rinse and drain them. Or if you're like me and you cook a great big amount at the same time and have cooked kidney beans in the freezer, then what you can do is just weigh out 240 to 260 grams of your cooked drained beans. Don't use them from frozen, let them defrost first and then you'll be off to the races, as my mom would always say. And here we are, I'm just going to scrape the extra little bits off the underside of the lid and pop that on. And here we go, just another few seconds on the kneading setting. So what I'm going to do now is just go to kneading. There you go. And if you look here, it's the little blade of wheat symbol. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this for 30 seconds and this will mix in all of the ingredients together beautifully. And one little twist of the silver button and it's kneading. So this is really easy. You could do this in another food processor or by hand with a fork um, if you wanted to. So don't feel that you can't do this recipe if you don't have a Thermomix. It's still wonderful and delicious. You will have to do a lot of mincing of the ginger by hand. Though. And chopping up your onion and bread and all of those ingredients too. So now I'm just going to go back to the home key. Just the little picture of a house. Yes, John, you have um, a question? There's a question just to confirm the amount of the ginger. Was it 50 grams of ginger? Amazingly, yes, 50. it is 50 grams, which is quite a lot. But now I'm just going to show this, John. So can you just adjust the light there? Lovely. So here we are with our spicy bean burger mix and we can pour that out. You can either make it into burgers now or you can let it chill until you're ready to do that. Um, I'm just going to put this to one side because actually I did some earlier as you might not be surprised to know. So here we go. That's our spicy bean burger mix. And what you do is you take, you divide it into equal amounts 
And what I did this morning was I made that amount into five great big huge fat bean burgers. But be prepared to actually adjust the quantities for whoever you're cooking for because of course some people might not want such a huge burger. We've got hungry adults in this house and so I've made them quite generous in size. Um, it's very easy to get six or eight bean burgers out of this recipe. And if you have a little one who only likes things in balls, like one of my grandsons, then feel free to make it into a little meatball sort of shape, walnut kind of shape. And this is vegan and vegetarian. And the best bit is they are delicious. So I'm just going to put that to one side for a moment. And I will show you. Let's finish off the bean burger first. So no, actually, I'll show you the meat, the meat burgers, the beef burgers. Hi, Mariel. Nice to see your name popping up too. Lots of people coming on. It's great. So here we are. We're going to do now our beef burger mix. And this is a different kind of burgers, obviously, much more classic style of burgers for barbecues. You can have them anytime. Really delicious. And you can even make this mixture into a meatloaf if you wanted to. So the first thing I'm going to do is a pretty classic thing with the Thermomix is make some flavored breadcrumbs. So I have a couple of slices of bread. This is, happens to be gluten-free bread, so you can obviously choose your bread for your dietary requirements in your family. And I've got some parsley here, fresh from the garden. Luckily, I got it before it started raining. And here's my clove of garlic, just a peeled clove of garlic. And that is just going to go in and be minced. And the easy way to do that is to actually do it on the turbo setting, which we've already used today. And listen to your Thermomix. Oh, yes, John. I was just going to say that this is a great example of how the Thermomix can some magically mix and chop and all at the same time with a number of different ingredients. Yes, absolutely, yeah. And these breadcrumbs, you can use them for all sorts of different things. And if you are a vegan or a vegetarian, please, I hope you haven't turned off yet because these breadcrumbs are wonderful in all sorts of vegan and vegetarian recipes. So here we are, one second, I'll turn it so that the, um, I'll just press the button so that the turbo is showing. I've set it at one second. Here we go, and you can listen. You'll probably hear when it's even. That's not quite even yet. And one more. And that sounds much more even to me. So I often use my ears when I'm doing something in the Thermomix. So here we go, I'll just have a little peek. And if I press the home key there, It'll let go of the lid and I can show you these lovely even breadcrumbs. So really nice, beautifully done, wonderful to sprinkle on top of a casserole or a cauliflower cheese or anything that you want to give a little bit of a crunch to in the oven. Hi Ellen, nice to see your name popping up too. And here we go with some onions. Now um, in, the, in the bean burger recipe it was supposed to be red onions but I didn't have any red onions today. So I'm using what I have. Feel free to play with these recipes and come up with what works for your kitchen on the day that you decide to make them. So the onions are going in and here we go. Did I read you the beef burger recipe ingredients? I probably didn't. So let me just show you here. So there's one garlic clove, three sprigs of parsley, 100 grams of bread half a teaspoon of sea salt and a quarter of a teaspoon of pepper, 150 grams of onions, that's what I've just put in. And then the next two ingredients after the onions, we'll be adding some ketchup and some minced beef. So that's good that I remember to read those to you because I've got my salt and pepper here. Yes, John. So uh, Mariam's asked, um, could you mix the bean and the meat? I guess she's saying a combination of the two. Sure, yes, you could. Um, that much ginger is quite um, overwhelming for beef, I find personally, but it would be beautiful with minced chicken, for instance. So yes, you can play around with these recipes. 
no problem at all. So now I've got my salt and pepper and onion in here and I'm just going to chop that for five seconds with the measuring cup on so I don't decorate myself in the kitchen. So five seconds and speed five. There we are. If I've missed saying hello to any of you, oh hi Vanessa, great. Um, nice to see your name popping up and what I've got now is I've got a beautiful mixture I've got my onions all chopped in and here comes our light lighting man is fantastic today and so you can actually see that that's the beautiful breadcrumb mixture with parsley and garlic and then the salt and pepper and the onion all chopped into it it's so easy it's amazing and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some well it's not exactly ketchup it's actually my homemade sweet chili dipping sauce because I went to the fridge this morning and I didn't actually have any ketchup. So I'm using what I've got and I could have used the brilliant barbecue sauce that I made a couple of days ago on Facebook Live, but I'm choosing to use this today because I'm using the barbecue sauce on the burgers to serve them. So now I'm just going to weigh in, press the scales, about 20 grams, it's a tablespoon of ketchup. This will add some nice flavor. Oh, look at that, that's pretty good. This will add some nice flavor to the recipe, uh, to the beef burgers. 29 grams it's gone to, that's fine too. And I'm just going to add in my beef now. Pop that in, I've separated it all out so it's not one great big piece. It's kind of loose. And there we are. I can pop that there and get these out of the way as well. There we are, and on goes the lid of the Thermomix bowl. And again, what we're going to do is say goodbye to the scales, and we're already on our uh, modes page on the Thermomix screen, the TM6, and I'm actually going to choose dough again and do 30 seconds again. This is a really nice length of time just to bring the mixture together, and that's Quite wonderful. So highlight the blade of wheat symbol and here it goes for 30 seconds. lovely. I'm able to do other things while the Thermomix is kneading up the mixture for me. And this is a great technique. You could use this mixture, mixture to make kebabs if you wanted to. So here we go and you've got a beautifully mixed and nicely kneaded beef mixture there to make your burgers. So I'm just going to put some out into this bowl so you can see the texture a bit more. And what I will do next is shape them into some burgers and then I'll chill them in the fridge and that will help them be, be firm and stay firm on the barbecue. And John, how did you find the mixture this morning when you were doing it? Was it okay on the barbecue? Uh, perfect, yeah. I mean, it, um, you know, often burgers like this can fall apart, but they, yeah. they were firm and they stayed together Lovely. and uh, they cooked very nicely. Great, which we'll show you in a moment. So what I did this morning was I shaped six generous sized burgers and that's really wonderful. And uh, yeah, can you see all that? Lovely, you can see the one that we've taken off the corner there, that empty space. So there's your burger mix and your shaped burgers. These can be actually, I put them on greaseproof paper by the way, or baking paper, just so that they don't mess up my tray so much and they're easier to get off when you're ready to cook them. And you can fry them in a pan, you can grill them under the grill, or you can barbecue them. Really, really easy. If you want to freeze them, you can freeze them at this point, or you can keep them chilled in the fridge for a couple of days. So there we are with the burgers there. And I'll just move this over here. And now I've got two plates. And I'm going to show you how to serve these. Oh, and John is dancing because he's got the burger there. And here we are, I made another batch 
of the burger buns this morning from the dough that I made yesterday. So here we go, John. First one on, second one on. And you'll notice I haven't touched anything. So this is our beautiful beef burger. And I'm just gonna pop that on there and I'll lift it up and show you. It came off the barbecue about 10 minutes ago. It was, it was lovely and juicy then. It's obviously yeah, gone so, a little bit dry since. So with beef burgers, they tend to shrink when you cook them. So if you want to pat them down shallower, they will pull themselves together as they cook. This is a lovely big fat one. And I've got a lovely bean burger here. Yeah, and actually a little tip. The burger did expand slightly. So if you made them slightly thinner, yes. then they'd be thinner on, on the bun. Yes, so, in actual, yeah. yes. So it tends to pull together sideways yeah. and then um, sort of end up being thicker. So here we go. And what we've got here is, do you remember way back in April, I did pickle my cucumbers? Well, here I've got some beautiful little pickles from the pickle my cucumber. And um, I have a jar that was left which is wonderful. I'm going to put a couple of cucumbers on each of these. And actually, I really like cute pickles, so I'm just going to put three on the bean burger. I've got some sliced tomatoes, beautiful ripe red tomato here. And I'm going to put that on top of each burger. And then I could put on some mayonnaise if I wanted to. Yes, um, please. <laughs> This isn't actually mayonnaise, this is hollandaise that I made a couple of days ago. So um, I might put, no, it's not quite softened enough. It needs to come to room temperature more to be a little bit more um, soft and put it on and have more of a mayonnaise texture. But I do have the ultimate barbecue sauce from yesterday. And well, no, it was the day before yesterday, wasn't it? And I'm just gonna pour some of that on. This is gorgeous. And of course you can butter your buns if you want or put on um, a vegetarian or vegan spread of your choice. And there we are. We have two beautiful burgers ready to eat. Ooh, a bean burger and a beef burger. So there you are. You've got fabulous burgers ready to go, super easy, homemade. And both recipes are multiple times teenager approved and I think that is probably the best recommendation you could get and John were there any questions today uh, no I think everyone was just drooling over the burgers um, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah nice and generous and big that's for sure and I'm really delighted that you all came on today and I've got a little note here oh next week um, Bake Off the Professionals is on television, running c currently, and it's on Tuesday evenings here in the UK, if you happen to be in the UK. Well, I've been inspired to actually do some baking recipes for next week. So next week, I'll be showing you three baking recipes. Really looking forward to that. I think we'll have a lot of fun. All right, everybody. Thanks very much for coming on. Bye.